gonna make a sandwich from those turkey day leftovers and enjoy better buddies. Hello, and welcome back to Better Buddies. I'm your host, RJ. With us this week, we've got Calvin. Hello. And Alex. Yeah, I'm here. What's up? (laughs) Uh, Glad to have you. What's up is our Better Buddies icebreaker, which this week is what food would you never eat no matter how hungry you are? That's difficult. That is very difficult. (laughs) It's probably a food I wouldn't know unless it was, like, presented to me. So... I mean, I've, I, I would try anything once, so I'm not sure what line. Yeah. I, like, I, I haven't had anything that I have, like, absolutely not. Like, I think everything I've ate, I have been like, yeah, I could eat this. Boiled okra. I've done boiled bo- I've okra. I've tried boiled okra once. Never again. Okay, it, so I fucked that up. You, fuck, you can fuck that up super easily because you make it really slimy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I fucked that up. Fun, but you can do it a different way. It's fine. <laughs> you can steam Deep fried it. okra. Deep fried okra is fucking. Deep fried okra is completely different. But yeah. yeah, but like you can boil okra. It's just you can't overcook okra boiling it, and then because then it'll be slimy, and then you don't want that. No, it's literally the same consistency as snot. Yeah, it's all. Is it the? <laughs> did you try the one I made, or did you make this? I can't remember. Uh, it was a like... staple in my dad's household when he was growing up. And okay. So just to pr- like force his children to experience what he had to, he boiled it once, and had all of us take like try some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, like you underboil it. Like you put it in there for thirty seconds, and then it's done. Basically, you're just heating up the okra. You're not cooking it. Yeah, That's yeah. the idea behind boiled okra. But if you actually boil it for five minutes, it is gonna come out, and you're gonna be like farmer spit on your plate and it's really gross and yep. I can eat it though. <laughs> so gross. Right? Like, but yeah, that's that's the food I would never eat. Interesting. Meatloaf is a close second. But that one... How would you like meatloaf? Oh, you don't like meatloaf? Not really. I don't understand that. I mean, I guess that's fine. I, I guess, I don't know. For this question, I feel like not this is different than not just not liking something yeah like that's why meatloaf is like a far 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 second like um and as someone who grew like was a really picky eater kid when i was younger like Same. and went a couple campouts with scouts where the only thing i <clears throat> ate at meals was like apples and water yeah like so you didn't learn. That's why you always get on the food planning so that you can oh, no, I tried. force things to plan towards how you like them. Or if they're going the wrong way, you can add sides that you know you'll be able to eat. I did after I uh, learned that lesson eventually, but for the first couple campouts, there were definitely some meals where I was just like, mm. <laughs> Yes, I'm not eating. <laughs> but yeah, you see, my problem with meatloaf is it's one of those things my family just never had because my dad hates it. A lot of our ah. food stuff is influenced by my dad. Because, um, <laughs> again, his family has a, an up and down history when it comes to cooking. So, meatloaf is one of those things that they would wind up, make, like his family would make, and it would just be dry and awful, and he hated it. So, he never wanted to eat it at home when once he was married, so my mom's just never made it. Yeah. My, my dad used to make, like, Elvis meatloaf. That's what he would call it. He bought, Elvis. yeah, like Elvis Presley. Okay. Were there he bananas bought... in it? No, 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 no. He, <laughs> he bought be. a recipe book from Graceland about like what mm. Elvis's cook would make. And so in our household, he would like I think it was like once a month because he was a truck driver. So it was every time he was home, and it was about once every month he was home. Um, he would. He would be home for a weekend, and one one of those days, he would make a recipe out of the book, whether it be like one of the simple ones, like they had instruction how to make a fucking peanut butter banana sandwich on there. Like, I mean, like, come on. <laughs> I mean, it's Elvis's favorite, right? Some like, people can't. don't know how to spread peanut butter on bread. 
You know, that's true. <laughs> uh, but they had one, they had Elvis Meatloaf in there. I can't remember any of the other ones, but we always had Elvis Meatloaf. He's, he made that once and said, yep, this is going into the brain forever. Nice. And, and he makes Elvis Meatloaf and it's super good. Oh, tasty. Yeah. And I think that's the other thing too, is like all the meatloafs I've seen, like grow like at, not at home have always been restaurant meatloaf and it's just been like that's not i don't mm -mm. okay (laughs) have you like have you seen anyone ever order meatloaf at a restaurant i know it's been presented at like golden corrals and things yeah i was about to say i don't know that i've ever actually seen meatloaf at a restaurant (laughs) that's what i'm saying like i don't think anyone eat it imagine going to like a a five stars too okay but that's that's different i'm talking about like Going to like a five star fancy ass restaurant and well, someone's just sitting there munching on some meatloaf. I don't go to five star <laughs> restaurants here, so how, how many five star restaurants you go to, Alex? I don't think I've been to one, but like I, I'm just trying to, I'm just picturing these people been like in really fancy. <laughs> Zero? Yes. <laughs> that's still one more. <laughs> you know, <laughs> try to do math here, but. Uh, <laughs> but yeah no um i don't know like getting dressed up fancy to eat me low that's just really funny to me like it's just the hunk of meat <laughs> like yeah so there's there's no food that either of you guys would like never ever 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 not in a million years eat oh i'm sure there is um i'm just nothing's coming to mind like alex said i i there's definitely foods I don't like, and it's yeah. like it's like I'm not gonna choose to eat it, but it's like oh you have to eat this. It's just like well this sucks, but I can make it through. You and I do poisoned. like to try and I do like to try and eat things at least once. You've been poisoned. The antidote judgment. is in the food. <laughs> I don't think I could eat coleslaw. Really? Ooh, that actually that's a good point. I don't know that I would. Yeah. Want, I would Ugh. I've tried I, coleslaw and I couldn't swallow it. No, and that was like that was recent. That was like two years ago. Question: Was it homemade slaw or store bought? Um, I've tried. I've tried two ways because people yelled at me for the first way is it was some kind of homemade slaw. Okay, and then it's like, well, that can be different and yada yada. Yeah, it's not a good representative. Like it might not yeah. be good slaw. People say, I'm like, all right. Then like we got tried like a restaurant slaw. I was like, this is fucking disgusting. Yeah, Couldn't no. swallow either. Like it, it is gross. The coleslaw is just like I think it's. I don't think it's like the vegetables. I think it's slaw. Like just the slaw dressing. Yeah. Because the smell. I used to make it. Um, because they had coleslaw at Pizza Ant on their uh, buffet, but we would make it uh by hand ourselves, and we just mix all the vegetables together and just put in the, the dressing. And the slaw dressing smelled horrendous, uh-huh. and I was just. Like, I can't stand the smell of it. So when I would bite into coleslaw, it would, like, go into my nose, and then it'd just make me want to vomit. <laughs> yeah. I hate coleslaw. I, I'm, I'm glad. I fucking hate coleslaw. I can't do that. I, uh, I, I'd rather die. <laughs> I'd rather die. <laughs> uh, see, I was the same way. There is exactly one coleslaw on the entire planet that I'll eat. It is my mother's. Because in the last few years, she's, like, she didn't used to really make or buy it. And the last few, a few years ago, she, like, started making her own coleslaw. And it's just, like, shredded cabbage and shredded carrot and some, like, light mayo thing. Slaw. Slaw I, dressing. Yeah, slaw dressing. <laughs> but, like, for whatever reason, hers is just so, like, light and airy and crisp that that, I like, I'll throw that shit on a sandwich. Yeah, I really, I really just can't. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even try it. I'm not gonna lie to you. If you presented me your yeah. mother's slaw, no, I would be fine. like, "I've tried coleslaw. I don't like coleslaw. It ain't happening." <laughs> <laughs> you, you can use that one too, Calvin. Coleslaw. Uh, yeah. I mean, I might as well. Fair I've had enough. raw horse before. That was actually really good. Ooh, would recommend. Was, was it tough? I would recommend it. No. Nah. I don't, I don't, it's been, I've only had it the one time. It's been a Where? while now. Where did you have raw horse? Japan. Ooh. Oh, that makes sense, you know. Horse sashimi. It was Ooh. quite good. Everyone else thought I was a lunatic, but we sat down at this restaurant. There was like eight of us 
Um, I think no, that was a lot. Well, there could have been eight of us actually. Uh, and we all sat down at this like uh kind of nicer restaurant, and everyone ordered their food, and I'm looking at it, and I got like the tra- like just a traditional Japanese curry, and then I was looking at through the re- the stuff, and I was like, ooh, they have raw horse, and everyone was like, no, mm-hmm. and there was one other guy who in our group that was just like, yeah, I'm down, so we had it, and there was like eight pieces, and we split it, and we were both like, this is great, and everyone else thought we were insane. <laughs> I would try it. That sounds good. I'd try that. I was, it was very salty. Have you guys ever had Rocky Mountain oysters? No, I favorite. have not, but I would try them once because They're I delicious. knew a guy that swore by them. They're really good. <laughs> <laughs> They're really good. I'd try it once. Sorry, fellow brother in. Yeah, I know. That's, yeah. the, that's like the hardest part there, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the fact that it's a... Uh, it's it's not the fact that I don't want to eat it. It's I just know. I just know. Like that's just. And you can it, never it feels un-know. disrespectful. Yeah, like it feels so disrespectful, and it's like okay, like. <laughs> but it's very tasty. I've tried it once. I would do it again. Um, because I I would get them again without a doubt, without a doubt. I was immensely disappointed today because I was going shopping, and in the like snack area in front of the checkout area, there was like. There's this box of buffalo bars. I was like, buffalo bars? Is this just like, it was next with all the beef jerky. Is this just buffalo? Like jerky that I can eat? And I looked uh, at it, No, it's like, it was buffalo, bacon, and cranberries. But the ingredients list was like pork, which like, maybe it's buffalo? But it's not enough buffalo for me to say like, ah, yes, I've eaten buffalo. Oh. I've had a buffalo burger before. Yeah, same. They would, uh, at music festivals, they always sell... Um, like they had that jerky stand with like the different, mm. different jerkies. Like, you know, like they have alligator. alligator. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like alligator jerky. Like that's like the most common one. But like I think it's called gator jerky. But it was like it's uh, just a bunch of different animals just made into jerky. Um, I'm always interested to go there. I don't think I've ever bought from there though. <laughs> Sounds like I just always see it. I'm like, I want to. It's expensive. <laughs> you have a gator. <laughs> Like I'll eat some gator. Um, I've heard but, it's like, really tough and chewy. Like, well, it's even gator, mo- you like yeah, and even more so for like jerky. We'll just chew it's on a like, hard tack. <laughs> there you go. Like it's a lot. It's really hard to cook those wild animals because like of how gamey they are. Just because their diets are so yeah bad. Technically, <laughs> 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 they're good. <laughs> Well, like yes, but they're bad for like eating. Plus. Like if you if you had a wild cow, like if you found a wild cow, shot it and ate it, it would taste nothing like like a burger, like a burger you get from like a restaurant, like nothing. Like you make but I'd eat it anyways. It. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It depends on how it's cooked because it'd be super gamey. I mean, just make a stew, like a nice stew, soften it up. I mean, that's the easiest way to get the game taste yeah. out of there. It's just... Yeah. Well, our next segment, Better Buddies Recommend, where we recommend a piece of media rather than a piece of meat to enjoy. Are you sure I can't recommend, like, going down to Dottie's Dowry and Dumplings in Madison and getting a burger? Like, I mean, be... I did recommend sushi once, so... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. It shows you my knowledge of Better Buddies history. Never bring me on to the trivia ever a show of Better Buddies. <laughs> Oof. That's, that's, our, that's our episode 200 <laughs> trivia night where I just pull up a bunch of trivia of the show and quiz whoever's on. Oh, God. How much oh, yeah. do you honestly remember of the show? Like, do you remember Not enough. A lot? I don't Not remember enough. anything. Yeah, I should, I should know more for the amount of episodes I've been on as well. <laughs> I just come here and talk. Somehow it gets posted to Spotify and calls it a day. Well, who would like to go first for media recommendation? I can if people need time to think. Uh, I can go. Okay. Uh, so it's kind of a conflicted recommend, but I'm going to do it anyways. Uh, I'm going to recommend the Wheel of Time Amazon Prime series. I have a lot of reservations about it still as a book reader, but I, um, I've because they changed quite a bit from the books. However, the with some time from the first three episodes that dropped, reading a bunch of stuff online, and 
uh, other people's opinions and stuff. I have to admit that it's not terrible. The first episode has some problems with pacing um, outside story. Uh, so just the first episode was rushed because um, the showrunner actually kept track and Amazon ex- the, the Amazon executives sent him over 11,000 notes. Oh, wow. Uh, so it was definitely like chopped up by Amazon execs and like corporate. So it's actually pretty good for how much interference he had to deal with. Uh, <laughs> but the first, the next two episodes really help it pick up. And I would recommend it if not just because if you find the show interesting, it'll hopefully get more people into reading the books. Uh, but the Wheel of Time is, yeah, I, I've talked about it before as a book series. Um, would recommend that. But then I I really enjoyed the TV, um, the three episodes I saw on Amazon Prime. The acting I thought was really good. I thought they, um, Roseman Pike is awesome. Uh, all of the other actors they have for the other roles are great. They're lesser known actors and actresses. Um but they all did great job. The production quality I thought was fantastic. The set design, the camera work, uh, the costume design, I thought that was all fantastic. So I would recommend it. If you're a book reader, I would I would I would tell you to just separate the books from your mind. But if you're a non-book reader, don't worry about that. Just go into it and enjoy it. Yeah, I I watched the first two episodes and I just could not get into it. What What? didn't you like about it? I think the thing that, something to be aware of with it, that at least I think is what caught me up, was it felt a little too wide of a lens in terms of character work. Like, the actors- Like there's too many characters? Yeah, the actors did great. Uh, No, not to discredit any of the performances. The performances were pretty good. But we started off with- as far like based on the setup from the again first episode was the worst of the three but the setup from the first episode was like hey here's a group of like four kids and two adults and they're your characters but at least in trying to think of other shows with ensembles like that there's always at least one character you're kind of like we have our group but here's your like your main guy main person gal or yeah yeah so the problem with that for this show is they're trying to kind of obfuscate who the prophesized chosen one is um so they're trying to play that up so it's just like who's it gonna be who's it gonna be um uh and the first episode definitely struggles from that from the most because they really throw a lot at you i really would recommend rj you finishing that third episode because a lot of people think the third episode was amazing and that's where it really turned around for them. Uh, and it definitely, it definitely narrows in on that third episode. Uh, it really starts to narrow in. You still have a lot of people, but you have a lot more distinct storylines and it's less like there's just a lot happening. Yeah. The other thing for me that really kind of like, that I struggled with trying to get hooked was Wheel of Time when it was first happening as a book was very was pretty original and unique in terms of its take on fantasy as I understand but yeah because of how long it took to go from first book to first silver screen episode so many other shows and mediums have explored that space now too where it's like all right, cool. We've got our kind of, at this point, kind of generic fantasy world with some generic, like semi-generic chosen ones because everybody else has done chosen one already. And there's witches and there's a religious order hunting down the witches and they're going on a quest and there's a big bad evil guy that's kind of like Sauron and Voldemort rolled into one. Yeah, I would I would push back against that because it's only been two episodes and the world is so much more vast than what mm. you've seen so so far. Um, but you are right that uh, Wheel of Time definitely inspired a lot of other works that made it to screen first. For instance, later in the series, there is a thing, there is a political game that in the old tongue, which is like the conlang for Wheel of Time, um, is called Deus da Mer which translates to the game of houses. It's literally a word for a game of thrones. And that in 
uh, George R. R. Martin a, was heavily influenced by Robert Jordan, the author of Wheel of Time. So yeah. it's kind of frustrating to see all these critics be like, it's the, is it like it's not the next Game of Thrones. It's trying to be the Game of Thrones and it just fails and it sucks at it. And it's like, well, no, it's not trying to be Game of Thrones. It's its own thing, as is Game of Thrones was not trying to be Wheel of Time. It's its own thing. So you're doing a discredit by trying to compare the two. But I, I, yeah. I would still recommend powering through those three episodes. Uh, it sucks that you have to watch all three, really, to get a true feel for it. I think that does suck and is going to hinder it. But I really do think you should give the third episode a shot. I might. We'll see. I, I, the thing that one of the other comparisons that's come to my mind is uh, um, Parks and Recreation, funnily enough, in terms of having like a bad start. And I think the difference in it comes down to genre, where if a comedy has a rough start in finding its characters and its footing... It can still kind of sneak by for the first few episodes of the season because, oh, they're mm -hmm. making jokes. So you can just kind of like laugh at the jokes. But with something that's more serious like this, if it's not clicking with you, there's just nothing else to like latch on to. But yeah, I'll, I'll consider giving ep episode three a try. Uh, Alex, would you like to go? Uh, sure, I can go. Um, I just had nothing to input in the last time. <laughs> <Yeah, that's fair. laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I've never seen this series. I, I think the funny thing is, I'm pretty sure I was on here. I think when last time I, I recommended the books, <laughs> yeah, which is probably a while ago. Like it's been a hot minute. <laughs> like I mean, um, over a year and a half ago, I think we had Eli and Calvin on talking about the first books. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I got I got Eli into reading them. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. I mean, like, yeah, I just don't have Amazon Prime, so I can't even watch the series. Um, uh. it's unfortunate, but not so unfortunate. Any whoozles? Um, yeah, I'll recommend. Um, let's see, what weave shit can I pull on my ass today? Yeah, sure. We'll play. We'll recommend the game I've been playing. I've been playing uh, Shin Megami Tensei Five. <laughs> <laughs> you know, more weave shit, as expected. Does about, um, yeah. Uh, so it's for a Nintendo Switch, and basically the whole idea behind the game is a JRPG, big shocker. And you go around, um, basically in the post-apocalypse, and recruit demons, and you fight other demons that are bad or good. I don't know. Um, but the big appeal to the game is that like you're exploring the post-apocalypse and characters will come up and talk about how they view the world and basically you're um in this one you're called the nahobino uh in other games uh, one the other game you're called the demi fiend but basically you're you're one of the people that are fighting for a god because the whole game like takes their demons are all based off of mythology um whether that be greeks nordic um like through the bible like like just like things like that just all these like big like holy figures uh hinduism just yeah. a religion as well i guess um and they make demons based off of them um but the whole point of the game is that you play through it and a lot of times it's just you get there's different endings to the game based on the dialogue choices you pick so uh there it's the way that it's split off is between law neutral and chaos law is uh, you follow in the steps of God, um, per se. It's not always God, but like it's just easier to say God. Um, and basically, you follow the angels and things like that, um, like creatures like that, and you do things that, that will benefit that side. Oh, whether if you go chaos, you'll follow in the devil or Lucifer, things like that, or just basic demons. But the big twist on the game, it's like, well... A lot of people would say, well, wouldn't the law side just always be the right choice because God is all power? Like, no, they always put a twist on it. So they go really hardcore in the sense of like pushing it to the extremes. Like, this is God wants the world to be one mind, just thinking, like, no freedom, follow yeah. the rules. You only can follow the rules, while uh, chaos is more so uh, the devil's like, it's freedom. Um, but in the most extreme sense of freedom, it's more anarchy, like, let like demons run around with like things like, uh, dog eat dog world. Um, and then usually the neutral routes in these games tend to be the best endings per se. Um, but 
a lot of times, uh, not always, but then you usually like go down this neutral route and it's obviously you're not picking either chaos or law. Um, but they change endings just based on what game you're playing. Um, mm-hmm. but in this one, I'm about, I think 30 ish hours in, which is, I think is halfway through the game. Um, and I still have no idea what path I'm going down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the way i play these games is i just pick based off of what um i feel like picking like every day i'm like no this is my opinion i'm gonna go that yeah. way and just see where i end up um there's usually one big decision that's like all right you'll go down it's like a split route that would be like all right you're siding more so with the chaos or law side and you'll go with that um you can still achieve neutral through that means and things like that but um yeah it's super interesting uh super fun because it's like pokemon also because you're recruiting demons by talking to them and then you fuse them away. So like um, as you demons, like you have the demons in your party and you use them as so you have four party slots, you have your main character and then three demons that fight alongside you. And each demon has different abilities, different spells. Uh, there's elemental weaknesses in the game. Um, so it's like Pokemon, but it's super hard. Like if you want a difficult JRPG, this game is very difficult. So, okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's some weeb shit. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, I, I was talking to Eli on our friend's giving, and he, uh, he was. I was telling him one of the neutral routes in the game because, like, not the endings aren't like happy endings. The best example is that in the third game, is that like you join Lucifer in the neutral route to be like a demigod, and they're like, he's like, yeah, you want to come fight God, and you're like. <laughs> yeah and he's like yeah we can definitely kill god and then you die um you don't beat god (laughs) that's that's the end that's the end of the game 50 hours (laughs) 50 hours and you suck nerd yeah he's got fucking bodied by god deal with (laughs) good um yeah but it's super interesting in that sense nice that that is a Mm -hmm. interesting like unique take on the multiple ending system I don't know if unique is the right word, but it's an interesting one. Yeah, no, it's super cool um, because nothing is actually like canon per se. Um, is there's usually not sequels. There's one where there is a sequel, and then so there is a canon ending. But um, all the endings are very, like, honestly, uh, in a sense, they're unfulfilling, but in the best kind of way. Because yeah. they're like, well, like, you see how the world becomes, but that's it. Like, your okay. character is just... Most of the time, your character either becomes a god or dies. So it's like your character that you played like 50 plus hours just influences the world in this way. And that's how the world is now. And that's and it's like it's neat to see. But it's like, oh, well, I just beat this game. But like, there's no happy ending. Like, I'm not going to be I'm not like in it for like a very riveting story of like companionship and friendship. No, I'm in a in a riveting story of like to kill uh, god. a battle. Yeah, a bottle of battle of theology, like really, like ideology. There we go. That's the better way to say it. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, before I get to my recommendation, I do want to say I watched Arcane. It yep. finished up this past weekend. I thought it was great, and I'm glad to hear it's getting a season two. Yeah, I, I've really enjoyed that. I mean, I finished it too. Uh, Calvin, have you uh, picked up Arcane yet? I haven't started it yet. I was waiting for it to be completely released so I could just binge through it, and I'll probably do that here. In tomorrow. the next couple days. Yeah, it, it's worth it. Uh, gorgeous. In the last episode, holy cow. <laughs> what a, what so a beautiful. The, it's just like the animation's really odd. Like it's very, it's good, but it's like, it's not, so, it's, it's just different it's 3D. It works. Yeah, it's very different. I like it. I'm glad you liked it, RJ. Oh, yeah. Um, um, and I, th- I think the final episode gave me a glimpse of my wolf boy. So. <laughs> <laughs> we can help, right? <laughs> well, there was a fuzzy arm strapped to a wall, so... I wonder, I wonder what that could have been, what singed, with, uh, with the bad doctor operating on, on it as well, so... Um, uh, my career. actual recommendation is a movie I watched literally last night. Ghostbusters okay. Afterlife. Ooh. Who? I've never heard of this movie. Oh, that's because it's been being announced for over a year, because the first trailer dropped pre-pandemic. Yeah, I was about to say, it's been a long time. <laughs> it's it's one of the pandemic baby movies. Um So she's got delayed endlessly or Yeah, basically. Okay. Got um, Ant Man. Huh? It's got Ant Man. It's got Paul Rudd as Ant Man as a science teacher named Gary 
something. Gregor Man. Guy Gags. Yeah, oh, basically. <laughs> Gary um, Guy Gags. <gasps> but it's a direct sequel to Ghostbusters 2. It takes that Ghostbusters reboot and throws it in the trash where I'm sorry, but it kind of belongs. <laughs> well, it's bad, though. What? The the reboot with all the with the females, right? Yeah, it was not that. Yeah, it's bad. females. Yeah. <laughs> all the females. Like, well, what? Like, it's it's that's what they are. What's her name? The blonde one, who's the Egon replacement. She was great. I don't think Melissa McCarthy should have been in that movie. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna say that. <laughs> I don't think that was the right vehicle for her. Um, but yeah, it takes the reboot, throws it away. We don't need it. It's a direct sequel to Ghostbusters 2, and I think it was, it's, it's definitely playing the nostalgia, you know? Like, it knows what you want, and it's gonna give it to you, oh, yeah, in terms of nostalgia. Like shit. <laughs> it's reviewed awfully, but then you look at fan reviews of this, it's like 9.5s yeah. and 10s, and I'm like, alright. <laughs> it, it's kind of that similar to how The Force Awakens was, like, oh, they're just doing A New Hope again, and they're aware but of they it. they did. They did just do an yeah. album again, and it sucked. All right. Listen they... to you, <laughs> <laughs> This is like the we're going to retell the first story, but in a better way. Um, Because it's not... It's not the same like setup of like, oh, we're going to start a ghostbusting agency. It's like, no, a bunch of kids find the old equipment on their granddad Egon Spangler's farmhouse and dick around with it for half the movie. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good time that's actually hilarious they blow up half the town and wind up in jail like awesome um but it's this is no surprise i don't think uh the old ghostbusters obviously all make cameos oh nice yeah and yes i see that here yeah and they do i think they do a good job of uh, with Harold Ramey being dead and managed to may have him influence the story without needing to, like, be there. And it mm. doesn't hurt that it's directed by the son of the original director, the Reitman. Huh, wow. Oh, wait, these are legit, legitimately children. These are yeah. not, like... No, <laughs> no, they got, like, Finn Wolfhard. <laughs> I was like, I thought you were talking about kids, like, oh, they're, like, 18... Like no, seven. no, these are like legitimately like ten to fourteen year olds. <laughs> yeah, and oh, wow. The girl in the movie who's like the weird science one, the way Egon was, she's like twelve in the movie. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> and her, she has no friends. And they move out to the dust town, and she makes one friend named Podcast because he has a podcast. RJ, it's RJ. No. <laughs> all right rj's new name is podcast 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 i don't carry my mic with me at all times so that's how you know you the kid a has phone? a podcast because he's constantly recording for his <laughs> podcast you have a phone that's got a mic it records i wouldn't count that he's I would. always recording for his podcast are you sure he's just not tiktoking that's why he has the mic advanced TikTok. level tiktoking well yeah but i'm saying the kid in the movie yeah. no because the kid straight up says hi i'm <laughs> podcast <laughs> When they get uniforms later, they he writes a podcast on his. RJ, I think that's what you need to do. You need to go to class, bring a mic with you, and just say, I'm, I'm doing a podcast for Better Buddies, which is my <laughs> podcast, and you are now on it. And just have a Better Buddies episode with your class and see what happens. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, no, it was really good. It was really... I was like the only young person in the theater when I went to see it, but that's fine. <laughs> Um, and I think the actors all did a great job. The story is pretty good. I'm a little disappointed there was no Slimer cameo, but you, you take what you can get. Yeah. Um, they do have post credit scenes. They've got two of them. I don't think they necessarily needed them to be two separate post credit scenes, but it's fine. And I think they uh they do a good job too of explaining like why the old Gust Ghostbusters moved on. And stop busting ghosts of like the ghosts just stopped coming and they all kind of had to go their separate ways. And so, uh, I can Wasn't that them. kind of the premise of the second one already? Um, is yeah. that they'd captured all of the ghosts? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like the second one's not that. 
It's like it's fine. It's fine. It's not, gr- it's not great though. You watch the first. If you watch Ghostbusters, you're watching the first Ghostbusters. Like I'll watch the second. Yeah. I'm not rewatching the second. Statue of Liberty. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> this is New York. It's New York. Yeah, yeah. But like, Venkman winds up as a professor emeritus of advertising at uh, State University of New York. Um, Winston Zedmore winds up starting his own business. They don't really talk about what his business is, just that it's very successful and he makes lots of money. Um, mm-hmm. Egon's dead, and but he moved out to the middle of nowhere and stole all their equipment and took it with him, including the Ecto-1. And then uh, Ray winds up w- running an occult bookshop that Winston pays the bills for. Yeah. So yeah, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Go watch it. It's a it's a fun nostalgia trip compared to the arguably fun, not fun, uh, Force Awakens nostalgia trip. Mm-hmm. Crash. Yes. Bandicoot. Yes. Because everyone knows <laughs> bandicoots are animals that everyone knows about and is familiar with, so we'll turn that into a character. <laughs> what, you don't know what a bandicoot is? Not enough. <laughs> you know what crash bandicoot is? It's... I know what a crash is. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> you don't like this little possum guy? I, I don't think he's a possum. Bandicoots? Yeah. No, they're, 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 they're marsupials. Right. That's not a possum. So they're related. M- possums are marsupials too, but that doesn't mean that bandicoots are possums. They're related. They're cousins. They're like, that's, the, that's... that's a stretch. I, I was just trying to stretch. It's like saying a, it's like saying a possum and a kangaroo are related. They are. They are. What, what, yeah, like, what, <laughs> what do you mean? It's like, <laughs> saying, <laughs> it's like saying a raven and a crow are like you're saying like a raven and a crow aren't related. Get the hell out of here. Those are at least both like corvids. This is mar- right. marsupials are like one step above right. that. No, I'm not I'll, afraid of I'll, getting I'll, into a lake with a possum. <laughs> Husher up there. I'm trying to find how far down the, the to find the. Our next you're segment. In infra class. Infra class. Yeah. So it's not order. Not species. I mean, are they? they are they? Are you sure they're not in order? Uh. I, oh, there is this order. Uh, yeah, the paramelophore. Order morphia. class phylum genus yeah. species. Uh, let's look. F. King Philip something something something. Well, our uh, next segment, how to be a better buddy, where we give some real and some humorous <laughs> advice. Well, Wait, they you don't want to talk about biology? Up. You don't want to talk about biology? What? What? No, I was giving you, you time to look up the information. You don't want to read about extant mammal orders? Well, have, you found, have you found the information on how closely related kangaroos and possums are? All right, all right. So a paramelomorphia includes bandicoots and bildies. That's not a possum. It equates approximately to the mainstream of marsupial omnivores. I want you to know the Google autocomplete is how for how closely are possums is how closely are possums and bandicoots related. <laughs> and what's it say? Uh, opossums are different from possums. They are. Yes. Yes, they are. Possums. Uh, possums live in Australia. Opossums live here. Yes. Uh, I think they share the same wombats. Uh, they share wombats. Okay. I don't know. This is. I think they share the same super order, but um, which is. Oh, oh yeah! Here we go. Here we go. Uh, possums. There. Wait, where's the bandicoots? They don't Sorry. list bandicoots. I don't know. There they are. Yeah, so they same they share the same super order. You are correct. Yeah, and which is literally the second closest you can be. Ah, oh, but it's not the closest. So right, because it's, it's order, one. super order. Like, order is pretty close, and then it's super order. is pretty close. And then super order is next, and then you have class. Phylum. Genus. Species. You're going the wrong way, and that was wrong. It's king- <laughs> kingdom, phylum, no. kingdom, and then kingdom, species. phylum, class, order, family, order. genus, species, and a super order is just an order. So, like it, 
Yeah, close third cousins. enough. Third cousins. Second cousins. Second cousins. Come on. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> Our first cousins is ridiculous. How do you progress <laughs> through a work day when you don't want to work? With the further details, I am a software developer. I love my job. Really great people on my team to work with. Good project. Pay is also good. I just have some days occasionally where I want to do no work at all. It just feels like a hassle. How should I progress through these days? How do you guys progress through? What's your hack to do your eight hours of work on a I don't want to work today day? So, Calvin, why'd you send this question? And I don't like it. <laughs> You're getting called out. Um, I am getting called out. So, Dear like, God. Is this, like, am I at I, I, I'm gonna, like, take this as if this person was in office. I would assume so. Yeah, I'm gonna take it as that. Um, I don't know. I've never had that problem. I guess, like, usually when I have those days, it's because something, like, a new video game came out. Mm. And it's like you're sitting there like waiting the whole time and they're like, I don't have an answer for you. I haven't solved I haven't solved that riddle just yet. Um I usually just work harder. <laughs> <laughs> as weird as that sounds, I'm just like, you know what, if I work harder, the day will go by faster. And it's, it does the opposite actually, because I get my shit done and then I'm sitting there twiddling my thumbs for four hours. So the first four hours, fantastic. The second four hours Quite horrendous. You're gonna go on every other hour schedule then. You're gonna like go hard for one hour and then ease off for an hour. Oh, I can't like if I'm an office, I can't sit around doing shit. Like, oh my god, I already have trouble. Like at home, I have trouble sitting around doing like just sitting there twiddling my thumbs when I don't have things that I'm waiting for answers. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I yeah. find I usually just like push ahead of like, oh, I don't want to do anything today. Fine, I'm going to sit here and, like, pretend to do stuff and move things around. And if I get, like, an hour's worth of work done, at least I got something done. I've taken to... Because uh, this person is basically me. I did not submit this question, but I very well could have. Uh, hang, on, hang on, let me do a double check. It does say frequent podcast associate as the person you sent it in out uh well like it was not me Calvin. it was definitely not me. <laughs> uh but uh i would say that how i tend to deal with it is um you, you just gotta take breaks like if you're working in a place that are, is just like no you can't stop no to the grind still never stop it's like well maybe that's not a great job uh but you do just need to be able to take breaks sometimes um and especially on those rough days so i find just taking my time to stand up refill my water bottle take my time walking down to go do that um and then i have a whiteboard that i got put up in my cubicle and i find writing out things gives me a nice distraction so even if i'm outlining something and i don't really need to write it down I'll just take the time to write it down because honestly, sometimes it does help you. And also it gives a change of pace in my daily, um, daily activities of like just typing <laughs> and staring at a computer screen. So being able to physically write something helps space things out. And then also creating just a list on the whiteboard of like physical things and be like, all right, I just need to accomplish like two of these things. And you just start going. And it sucks. There's no easy way through it. You just kind of have to find some music, find a podcast maybe to like zone into and just kind of get through it. Yep. Our next question. We all get injuries here and there. What is your line between I can just walk it off and I need to see a doctor? Have you broken a bone? No, walk it off. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I I have broken a bone and walked it off. Uh, <laughs> I would not recommend. <laughs> um, yeah. My my nephew broke his his elbow. <laughs> Did I? Um, recently playing soccer, and uh, he was sitting there before he looked at it. They he, everyone was asking him, "Oh gosh, are you okay? That looks really bad." He's like, "Yeah, I'm fine." And he stood up and he couldn't move his arm. Uh, um, and then he was like, "He's like, I'm fine. It doesn't hurt that bad." And he looks at it, and then he like. As soon as he saw it, I think he just like everything just pieced together, and he's yeah. just like, "Uh, <laughs> yep. been there. That ain't good." <laughs> if been you can't move there. something, it's time to go to the doctor. Well, 
If you can't move, it's either broken or paralyzed, so... Okay, I disagree, because if you tear your ACL, you can still move everything. You just can't. You just just probably shouldn't. Uh, No. uh, Okay, so, like, you commonly, like, especially in, like, sports, like, obviously ACL tears are very common, um, but you you'll see them walk off the field and like because it's just when there, there was actually just recently a guy that tore his ACL and like he was in practice. He's like, Oh, I think it just popped, but like, it feels fine. Um, he's like, I'll just ice it after practice. And then he went to his media day. He talked through his media day. Uh, he woke up the next day and I think he went like to start running for practice because he's like, Oh, it aches a little bit, whatever. Um, as soon as he made that first cut, he's like, I think I tore my ACL. And it's like twenty four hours afterwards. Like yeah. it was, it was like those are easy. Like you can't walk off an ACL, but like you it doesn't hurt as bad. Like I don't know. I don't think that negates the point of like if something doesn't move and it should go to a doctor. But like you can't tell. Like <laughs> well, that's, that's my point I think it's though. Just like that, that's definitely a point of like oh get it checked out anyways. But like again, it's supposed to move and it's not moving. <laughs> I feel like it's a little different that it's not supposed to move and it has moved. Well, you remember in college when I sprained my ankle that bad and I was like yeah. barely able to walk? Yeah. Um, I couldn't move my ankle. <laughs> so go to the doctor. I didn't. <laughs> should have. I you walked should've. it off. Shouldn't have. Took, uh, took, took like two months. Ankle's fine now. Would only taken a month and a half if you went to the doctor. What, what does a doctor true. do about a fucking sprained ankle? They say put a fucking they cast on it. it. They boot yeah. it and charge you four like, thousand dollars. Yeah, but a hole in your pocket it. would have given you more motivation. <laughs> and I could. I, I just went to Walmart for ten dollars and bought a foot slink thing that like just go. compresses yeah. your foot and, you and a bottle limp. of ibuprofen. And yeah, and you just limp on here <laughs> and you're good to go. Shit hurt. Oh, spray! I sprained my ankle so many times. Like I, I've sprained my ankle. I think I've been rollerblading five times in my life. Four of those times, I've sprained my ankle. Stop rollerblading. I did. (laughs) That's like one of those things that I haven't done. I've done a lot of things to injure myself, but it's like I've never sprained an ankle. Oh, I hate it. Yeah. I mean, I've, I, uh, I sprained my knee. That sounds painful. Yeah. Well, wait, was it a sprain? What was it? It was like, it wasn't, it didn't dislocate, but I was playing touch football in elementary school and I fell and some guy tried to hurdle me and ended up just kicking the side of my knee. <laughs> Kid doesn't have hops, never do it again. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to hurdle someone, hurdle somebody, come on. <laughs> so yeah, uh... Use your best judgment, and if it's not, if it's still, like, profusely bleeding after an hour and bleeding through everything you put on it to, like, make it stop bleeding, you're in more trouble than you think. Our next question. What are your go-to nonsensical answers for questions? With the further details, I watched an episode of House MD where he avoids answering a question by saying, I was mowing the lawn when the phone rang, and provides no further explanation. Curious to see if you guys have similarly confusing answers I can borrow. And in response to this question, I say orange because a vest doesn't have sleeves. Well, of course. I don't know. I feel like Eli has a lot of these. I guess not a lot of these. Just a lot no, of times. No, Eli just has a tendency where he'll ask him a question. He'll answer something else. <laughs> he'll answer like three <laughs> steps ahead. <laughs> he'll answer your next question. Eli, do you want to get dinner? Oh, or do you want to get something to eat? It's like, it's what, he's, what he would say. He wouldn't say I just ate. He's like. Oh, I have crackers. That's what he'll say. Yeah. I was literally just thinking, like, <laughs> we, were, we were going to the movies one time. I was like, I was, was like, hey, you want to go to the movies? Like, I got popcorn. Nice. Okay, do you want to go to the movies? <laughs> <laughs> I got popcorn. <laughs> I don't know, I man. I don't have any of these. I, 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 love, I, like, I love House MD. I can talk about House MD. I can't talk about nonsensical questions, so... <laughs> So there is yeah. your nonsensical answer. Anytime someone asks something, just start talking about house. There you go. I don't know, man. I just, I just, there's so much. Hey, about Alex, you want to, you want to go to the movies on Friday? Well, in episode 37 <laughs> of house, it wasn't like this. <laughs> a phone ring. <laughs> that works. I was mowing the lawn when the phone rang. 
Kelvin, do you have one? Uh, sure. Well, you didn't use it, so... That's what you think. Our next question. <laughs> what scene from a movie or TV show gives you motivation every time you see it? With the further details, the scenes that motivates me would be in Limitless when he takes the pill for the first time as he never fails to motivate me to get my shit together and to get smarter and to clean my room. By doing drugs? Yes. I think, uh, I don't know. I Like, for TV and, like, movies, I can't, like, there's nothing really that I see. I'm just like, oh, I can't think of anything. Can I, like, use music or video yeah, sure. games? I probably can get something from it. that. Do it. Do it. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> there. That there one. You go. That, <laughs> one's that, one. that one doesn't motivate me. Oh, my gosh. You I love Shia LaBeouf, though. I think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so what music then, if you're going to choose music? Uh, if I had to do music, um, like when I'm running, I would say, what is it? Oh, man. Why can't I think of the song name off the time? It's, it's, it's an Eminem song, and it's... Rap Guy. Uh, no, that song does not. <laughs> I love that song. I that does not get me through workouts. So, um, as I find it real quickly here, until uh, I collapse. That song is a fucking. Whew, that's a good one. Oh, uh, I will. I see your music choice, and I will offer also offer music choice. Uh, for the glory by uh, off the album Machines by All Good Things. I think I've heard that before. I think I know this. Yeah, uh, my, it up now. one of my coworkers. It's his like uh, ultimate max out pump up song. Where when he's hits a max weight, he'll put it on to like all good things strong. you said. All good things for a movie. Avengers Endgame, Captain America standing alone against Thanos' army gets me every time. I do not know this song. Me neither. Uh, I have no idea where the hell this came from. I'm trying to think of a TV show that gives me motivation. Yeah, I was trying to think of something like that too. Nothing really comes to mind. Um, I mean, I'm a sucker for those nerdy, cheesy like speeches and like fantasy movies and stuff. Yeah, but I don't know that I it, like for a serious answer. I don't know that any of them like motivate me. But it's fun to just watch those scenes and just be like, ah. Oh. There's. Uh, I thought of a movie actually. Yeah. There's a scene. It's a. I can't remember the name of the damn movie though. Um, and I'm I'm upset about it. Uh, it's a football movie, and then basically they just have the guy crab walk with a guy on his back a hundred yards with a blindfold on, and then there's like a giant speech with it. And that scene, whew, every time, every time gets it. I'm like, all right, I need to go do something. <laughs> he's like, you can't do it. You say you can't do it. He's like, it's like he told him to do twenty yards. And he does the whole field. It's like, all right, yeah, that's good. That's motivation right there. That's, Let's hit that grind. <laughs> that's good. That's a good one. I'm, yeah. Movie one that I thought of from my favorite movie, Toy Story. Uh, in the middle of the movie, at like the lowest of the low for Woody and Buzz, they're trapped in Sid's house. Sid's going to blow Buzz up the next morning. And Woody gives him this pep, pep talk of like, who who gives a flying fuck that you're not a real spaceman? The kid in the ha- that house like loves you for being his toy, so get out there and go do that. Because... You'll make him happy. Nobody wants me. I'm old. Like, but we could say you you're free. You're not trapped in the crate. Go run, leave while you can. And then he doesn't. He saves Woody, and it's like, oh hell yeah. Friendship. Friendship. Hooray. Let's do it. I'm um, supposed to oh, weep, facing... weep shit of like friendship is magic and all that. You know, so, that's sort of. lame. Facing Facing the Giants was the movie, by the way. Okay. The movie slaps. Facing it's so giant. good. It's a 2006 football movie. We watched it in uh, when I played like football, like fifth grade. We watched it as a team. Um, I mean, I could just be like, "Oh, Kingdom Hearts, a big motivational there." <laughs> Seal the keyhole. Like, no, fuck that shit. That's not even like weed shit. That's just fucking Disney bullshit. I, I honestly can't think of like a scene from anime at all. Nothing comes to mind of like some like motivational thing. That's because anime is the entire uh, product. 
Okay, you <laughs> sure need to leave. <laughs> I would say, uh, there's like Demon Slayer is some pretty good ones, uh, but like I would say more so. Oh, Demon Slayer is pretty oh, solid. The movie, the, the movie. movie, yeah, the yeah, movie. Yeah. Oh! I, you, you said that, you <laughs> said that, and then the movie came to mind, and I was like, ooh, ooh actually, that, that, actually, yeah. what's his face, the flame Hashi? Yeah, what are you fucking? Uh, with the yeah. animation, with the yeah. animation, for like a thousand, like for like ten thousand dollars a fucking frame. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, yeah, no, I take it back. Yeah. Oh uh, god! <laughs> oh, that was so good. You can oh. just hear their voices as they're overpowered by this weeb shit. Oh, I should watch that tonight. You should watch Do Demon it. Slayer. Do it, RJ. It will, it will I don't know. I still look. It, I gotta get into. I gotta watch my hero first. All right. <laughs> No, you don't. I'm my hero's to overrated. Watch my hero. Let me watch. My oh hero. well, I think you would enjoy my hero quite a bit. I'm That's fair. Hero. RJ might. RJ yeah. would probably enjoy. That's the reason why I'm telling him to watch. Eli's it, been cause... telling me to watch my hero for three years specifically because of all the superhero shit. It's it's literally no other reason that I think this is just like yeah, my hero. I agree is overrated. It's still really good. It's just yeah, overrated. for sure. It's yeah. a good series. But I'm not saying I... telling RJ to watch my hero because he has to watch my hero. I'm telling RJ to watch <laughs> my hero because he has to watch Jerry O. Because he's RJ. That's <laughs> fair. Yeah. That is, that's the only reason. It's because he is RJ. I feel like he would get a lot more references than I get. Oh, yeah. And yeah, like it. Um, Without a doubt. Well, our next question is also about cartoons. What male cartoon character do you think influenced you the most in life? Uh, Joey Wheeler. Ugh. Wow, that was quick. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a little quick there, Alex. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. Who? Yu Gi Oh! He's the Yu-Gi-Oh! Brooklyn kid. <laughs> Brooklyn oh, Reed. Yeah, Joey Wheeler. Long time. <laughs> My sister. Uh, honestly, um, as much as I was like saying that as a joke, I would, I would not like. I wouldn't say like it's definitely not the case because he's always like was the underdog and he, he relied a lot on like luck and just believing in the situation to get in the heart of the like, it'll work out in the end i got this and that, that's like that's like my mentality so i would yeah sure we'll go with joey wheeler why not even though it's was, it was just a joke because i was like brooklyn rage is it a <laughs> <laughs> brooklyn rage, rage? <laughs> is it shitty if i say spider-man why why that be shitty uh, because like there's spider- like five to ten cartoons of spider-man so when you say cartoon, does it have to be animated? Well, what not an like animated claymation? cartoon are you watching? Claymation, right? That's animation. Oh, fair. Why? What claymation. Were you thinking? I don't know. I guess I I don't know why, but I yeah, I heard cartoon and I thought comic, but you're right. They are different. <laughs> I mean, you can just say comic and do it. I was just thinking have... hand-drawn. Was what it was yeah, just do it. If you have one, do it. Honestly, Ooh. Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes. No, I see what you're. I see what you're getting at, though, because those are cartoon. Those are like. I consider that a cartoon. Yeah. That's a cartoon character. Yeah, because That's, like a. It's, right, you would say cartoon character, but yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You would it still is say definitely a comic. Yes, but like a, I th- yeah. like. But no, that's. I think you're right here, though. That's still a cartoon character. Like I consider Calvin and Hobbes a cartoon character, not a comic character. It like it's a cartoon. I, I pass is, judgment that it fits for this question. <laughs> is not Is not isn't like the the word cartoon came from comics to begin with, anyways? Because it's a little no idea. Because like it's you're look at the word cartoon. It's like a tune for the co- car, right? Like etymology of cartoon. Uh, wow, it's from the 16th century. Yeah, yeah. it's like it's just a fun drawing for like when traveling or like uh, a cartoon, little... a drawing on strong paper. Oh, there we go. So, well, newspaper's kind of flimsy and weak, though. Cartoon character or ridicule by cartoon. Um, Interesting. In that case, I'd have to probably throw also then, like, as a comic strip one, throw the Peanuts cast in there. Like, Snoopy in particular. That was... Garfield kid. You were a Garfield kid? I was indeed. <laughs> Fair. Fair. I, we, I think we all had that Garfield phase. I, that's I would read it with my dad. That's it. Yeah. Like I don't know. Like I'm trying to think. Like I I would never read the Peanuts. Oh, see, my grandparents had a bunch of like the collections of Peanuts comic strips, their cabins. So, like every summer, just plow through all those. Okay, like with the holidays rolling up, you're gonna start seeing the Peanuts movies again. Yeah, and and specials. And I have never understood the Peanuts specials. What do you mean understood? Like, um, why do people care about? Them? 
nostalgia. It's nostalgia. It's, nostalgia. <laughs> it's about ninety to ninety-five percent. They only survive on nostalgia. Because, I'm not saying they're bad. I, but I, don't they're, they're bad. I don't know that they're worthy necessarily of lingering on as they have. Besides nostalgia, like I watched them as a kid, but I like the only scene that I remember liking is the one where Lucy pulls the football, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the classic, the classic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think part of the problem is that there's some peanut specials that are really good and some that really, why'd you make this? Because, like, there's the Thanksgiving special where they have their Thanksgiving dinner and it's the, like, the kid gets up, Peppermint Patty gets upset because, like, there's there's no turkey here. Where's the mashed, like, you invite us to Thanksgiving dinner and they make the point of, like, hey, we, we're all here together and we have food. Like, let's just enjoy our company. Which my family one time actually did that. We made all the like snack stuff from the Thanksgiving special and ate it while watching the Thanksgiving special. Nice. Um, but then with like the Christmas one, that's another really good one. Of it's just like it was the first one they did, and it's hey, the spirit of Christmas isn't about the tree and the stuff. It's about goodwill towards men and e- each other and baby Jesus. Man, but then there's the um, there's the Charlie Brown goes to Europe. And they, <laughs> yeah, he goes to Google. Europe and learns this? about D-Day. What? They visit Normandy. <laughs> I've never heard of this. Yeah. <laughs> visit, they visit Normandy? They straight up visit Normandy <laughs> and, like, the the graveyard. <laughs> wow. Bon yeah. voyage, Charlie Brown, and don't come back. Yeah. They go to France. So that's I think they're I think for the most part the Charlie Brown specials are good and actually enjoyable on their own. I enjoy them as specials, but it's it's hit or miss. Yeah. Um The Bon Voyage one's supposed to be pretty good from what I see here. No, it was it was really well done and like it's a good commentary on like, hey, D Day was a terrible, horrible thing that like, yeah, we won the war, but it was it was an atrociously high cost of lives. But it contrasts a lot with Snoopy's whole, like, I'm gonna get the Red Baron. <laughs> <laughs> Our last question this week. What do you think about YouTube getting rid of the dislike button? Dislike. Where's my freedom of speech? <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, uh, I, I just, I just, I'm gonna miss my dislike to like ratios. <gasps> Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it did actually serve a purpose because you were able to tell if a video was actually like Favorable. what you needed, like what you needed. Like the the number one uh, example I I saw people bringing up is for like how to videos and stuff. And like if you're looking for how to do something or like help with something, the dislike ratio was actually helpful because now all you're gonna see is like oh there's some likes. But it's like I, if if you can't if you don't see that a thousand like a bunch of people are disliking a video, you may think that this is the proper way of doing something, and that might lead you astray. <laughs> like I get what they were going for to try and remove like the like people using it to like bully people, but th- that's not going to remove people bullying people on the platform. It's just going to shift how they do it. Yeah. Like if you remove all the ways for people to not bully each other on the internet. You just have TV channels. Yeah, you remove the internet then. Yeah. Um, I don't like it. Uh, it's that whole, like, free speech. You let, you, again, you, people are going to bully each other no matter what. It, you got to you gotta just accept the fact that to a certain degree, there's going to be some bullying. And you want to mitigate it. And you want to, like, tell people, hey, don't be bullies. But you got to tell people, don't be bullies. You can't just take away the tools they use to bully because they'll make new tools. How, like, like I wonder what the R and D behind removing this was. I wonder if it was literally just because they saw most of these dislikes were bots, like, um, like on the majority of these bigger videos, right? Like, I believe in their press release they talked about trying to mitigate re- um dislike gangs or something. I forget what their terminology bombings. was. Review like review bombings, but like people going around and setting up, like you said, bots. But then also just in general, people doing it manually of going and targeting specific people to bomb them with dislikes. And they're like, oh, we're going to re- we're going to like stop this from happening, except the creators still see the number of dislikes. So the creators are still getting bombarded by like that. I like all of those dislikes. It's just now they're suffering in silence. 
<laughs> yeah, they don't yeah. like other people can't know. But I think it's like what trying to limit like the view because I think what um like there has to be some like actually like researched reason on why hey doing this good idea yeah they still get to see dislikes and I, I would posit it's got to do with the algorithm. No, no, dislikes have nothing to do with the algorithm. Really? Hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, I dislikes actually help you in the algorithm because it cause it creates more views. It's um, interaction. Yep, it's interaction. So if you get interaction on a video, that's like a positive thing, even if it's a dislike. Um, and like the biggest thing in the algorithm right now is watch time. So yeah, that's why you see the bigger YouTubers um when they first start like um like like when they first start getting big they'll start they'll, they'll change from like posting like two videos a week or three videos a week to like posting five days a week and it's like 10 minute videos because they get yep. their ad revenue video. well it's eight minutes now eight minute videos they get their ad revenue Please, and then they're five minute videos with three minutes of ad revenue well yeah um I, I i think my favorite trend nowadays at least with the youtubers i watch is like all right, first 30 seconds of the video, I cannot cuss because then you get demonetized. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and, and after the first 30 seconds, you can start cuss swearing because that's all the that's all they check for. That's, that's so fucking stupid. <laughs> Dude, YouTube is something else, man. Like, I, I just because of like how much YouTube I watch and like I haven't like done much research, which is how much I like read online just from YouTubers bitching about YouTube. And then me looking into that just because I'm like curious. I've like learned so much about how the fucking YouTube, <laughs> the YouTube shit like w like works. Yeah. It's just like how 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 this increases, and um, a lot of people just get mad at it because it's like watch time is important, um, but like it's one of the most important, but it's still not the most important thing to be on there. The like dislike ratio ever since like like and dislikes ever since I think 2013. Did not it has stopped meaning a thing when it comes to the algorithm. It just matters of the number, and big number means good. Wow, mm, right. and that's just totally in the two. So yeah, that's what we think about YouTube getting rid of the dislike button. Thanks YouTube. It's bad. It's bad. bad you lose information, but you know, I guess it's like I'm just curious. I'm very curious to see why. But YouTube's a bunch of pansies. Yeah. Yeah. Old man. Yeah. Back in my day, old man yells at Cloud. Oh, they would have gotten rid of the like button because nobody needs reassurance. Why is it that every time I come on here, we get old man RJ to come out? Because I'm always old. That's my secret. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> get off my lawn, old man. Well, I won't subject you to old man RJ any longer. Calvin, Alex, thank you for joining this week. Everybody, uh, you had Thanksgiving yesterday, so happy Thanksgiving. Uh, and good luck with your Black Friday shopping. I don't envy you. Wait for Cyber Monday. Oh. Are you guys going out or at all? No. Are you two? God, no. <laughs> God, no. It's like, so I've been out like the last three years, and I'm not going out this year. Um, not last three years. I would say avoiding, you know, because obviously COVID, like yeah. three years prior. But now they're like reopening, doing things for Black Friday yeah. again. Um, it's never been too bad. Uh, it's like, like you get some... Like, it's usually was the day of Thanksgiving that was always the worst. You would go and then you would just get just lines and lines. But yeah, yeah, like, it, it was never too bad on that day of Black Friday. Well, uh, thank you to the band Problem of Interest for letting us use the song Living in the Moment off the album Cross Off Yesterday. You can find them on iTunes and Spotify. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, if you want to get in contact with us, we have Facebook, Better Buddies. We post meme mondays and our icebreakers for you to answer we have our twitter account at better budcast use the hashtag better buddies when you tweet about the show or our gmail account better at gmail.com use you can send us fan art hate art fan mail hate mail declarations of love and or war icebreakers you want us to answer or questions you need advice on and last but not least be a better buddy Do you have that written down, or do you just do it from memory each time? Memory. I hope he does it from memory, and he just, like, 
He's just a, like, or he just plays in a robot, and we don't even realize it's just a robot argument. It's, it's, a, it's the same recording each time. He just presses yeah, play and sits play. back. Yep. Like, you can't, that's why if you say anything, he won't stop actually talking. Um, and he just, like, the small edits RG does on the podcast is just removing the odd sounds from the record, like, from that part of the podcast specifically. Well, that's why I use OBS. I record the desktop audio. So once I need to start the <laughs> outro, I just click play on the sound file, and you guys can say whatever you want. The sound file is playing. I can just walk away from oh, it. That's tr- oh, that's there true. Go. So you got water in that time. Like, you'll never know. <laughs> 